What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are finally taking apart the blown D16Z6 that we picked up way back in like October. This was the engine that had all of the water inside of it. Pistons are all crusty. And here is the Z6 head from that engine. We're gonna take this to the machine shop. It's gonna get rebuilt for Leo. And this is gonna go back into Leo's car. And I'm gonna get my original head back. Show them that? That oh yeah check out the head gasket so this is a follow-up if you guys have not seen the video where we pull this engine and it squirts a bunch of water up into the air at like midnight make here sure is you're make sure you're subscribed and here is a link right there so hit that watch that video and here's part two this is what ended up happening way back then this was the head gasket completely blown out as you can see this these are the coolant passages right here and this is obviously the combustion chamber um this is cylinder one which was the cylinder that was completely flooded in water when i pulled the head off right now should have recorded that but the reason why is because look at this this is the seal all of um these coolant passages were basically being allowed to leak directly into the combustion chamber same with these two these ones are minor but pretty much this entire head gasket was gone it's the factory oem gasket and this is why this engine didn't bring us home that day so let's get to the machine shop and let's get going for the day machine shop it's probably going to take about a week maybe a week and a half it's going to get a full valve job and full rebuild and then it is going to go into this car we already have a head gasket for it um this car is currently in the middle of blowing a head gasket consumes a whole lot of coolant but um you know we're going to get all of that stuff figured out and wrapped up very soon so this car is probably going to go under the knife and a video coming out next week but until then let's do some trailing arm bushings what's up guys we are back over here at my mom's house my crx is over there both crx's are together again and i just want to walk you guys through what's going to be my brake setup so for rear trailing arms i have civic si um rear discs these actually were sold to me by brandon civic we have shit up huh civic or crx I think they're from a CRX. <laughs> I don't know. They're CRX Civic SI. It's the same stuff. This stuff came from Brandon. We have shit up. This is my DA9 brake booster and master cylinder. This came from like three or four months ago. That DA9 parts car that me and Big Man and Leo went out to and took the um, B18A from. If you guys remember that, this came from that car. It is a little ugly. It looks like it had a pretty bad leak at some point. I'm gonna degrease this, I'm gonna sand it down, and I'm gonna paint everything. And I'm also gonna replace that seal, make sure that this master is good, it should be good. All of this should be good to go. But this is not the biggest master cylinder and brake booster option. The DC4, DC2 Integra actually has the biggest option. This is the second biggest option, and this will actually do us just fine. And then the main attraction here, these, are big brakes from an EF sedan, a Civic EX, 1991. The only year you could get them. This is the biggest bolt-on brake option for the EF chassis. These will not change the geometry of your suspension whatsoever. These will basically be like running SI knuckles, except you have a much bigger brake rotor, you have a much bigger brake caliper, and all in all, these are just very, very nice. If you guys know what these are, then you know how hard they are to come by. And then over here, we have some stock CRX SI knuckles. The wreck's gonna be picking up for something. I'm not sure what, but yeah. These four are going on the car. These two need new ball joints. And these guys are gonna be getting polyurethane rear trailing arm bushings. So let's get started. So guys, 
There are a few ways you can go about removing your original OEM rear trailing arm bushings. One way is to cut out the rubber, cut out this ring, and basically just smack it out. In my opinion, an easier way, the way I always do it, is me and Leo picked up a big torch and we are going to set these bushings on fire until they are not there anymore. Disclaimer, we are not professionals. Do not attempt this at home and be safe. Uh, so one thing I do want to say this is that it's going to smell pretty bad. So wherever you are going to do it, please make sure that A1, no one is near. <laughs> Two, uh, wear a mask. Yeah. It gets pretty gnarly. Gloves. Oh yeah, and gloves. One thing that I do want to point out though, guys, is that this is the yellow torch. This one is a lot stronger and a little more expensive than the blue torch. This one is what you need to do this. The blue torch does not get hot enough. And technically you could get this job done with the blue torch, but when you use a blue torch, you usually have to have two of them going at the same time to get the bushing hot enough to ignite. It has to reach a certain temperature for the rubber to actually combust and this torch gets the job done with no problems. So let's get started. The key is to get it red where it sustains the flame by itself. And then what you're doing is just pointing the torch at it to keep it healed. Same bushing won't be able to slide in properly. Just give it a nice little straight. Watch out with the torch. This got pretty hot, so be careful. Then 
ini kering air teman-teman But all right, you guys, that's pretty much it for removing the old bushings. This is, in my opinion, the easiest way to do it because I pretty much recorded the entire process for you guys. I think I stopped to get an Instagram clip like once, but it's easy. It takes like 10 minutes max, 10, 20 minutes. You kind of make a mess doing it and you also really need to do it in a place where you can make a lot of freaking smoke. A well-ventilated area. Yeah, but it's a lot easier than actually pressing out the bushing, cutting out the bushing, wire wheeling the bushing, whatever. There's many, many ways to do this. This is, in my opinion, the absolute easiest. If you can't take the heat, you got to stay up off the streets. <laughs> Look at Leo. <laughs> He's straight up dripping sweat from doing this. Hey, I just, you know, I'm a sweaty boy. So there are many ways to do any task. This is the way we took piece of steel, some strange contraption he made, put the steel on the bushing. Leo stood on that like a mini pogo stick hey. and the bushing popped right in. Dana, Dana said this is a potato gun. You see, you got your little sightsee, you got your little trigger right here. And just like... <laughs> <laughs> or you could go to AutoZone and you could get a ball joint press and pop these guys in too. Some people actually get pretty lucky and can squeeze these in. They're not too hard. They don't need a crazy amount of force. Just the weight of Leo, I guess. They give you some grease. You basically want to get this grease on all of the bushing to trailing arm or bushing to wishbone contact points, meaning the entire inside of the bushing. I like to get the lips when I have extra grease just because it helps them pop in. But um, you need to get this inside where it's going to actually be contacting the race. Sometimes I like to just go through it with my finger and get a little bit in there. And then you have to get more on the inside where your wishbone is going to be. Also remember, energy suspension is on the top towards the brake. The bottom has nothing. That'll go towards the car. But you want to know why it's like that? Why? If you look closer, this has more of a flange so it can slide in easier. And I guess it's as easy as that, guys. All right, you guys. So these guys are cleaned off. All I did was wet sand them with 1200, basically just ran them through the sandpaper until all the crud got taken off. It only took like two seconds. Now then, we're gonna pull the rear drums off of this car. So let's get it jacked up and let's get the wheels off and we'll start pulling off the trailing arms. Oh yeah, and normally from here, you would go ahead and just pop these guys in but pay attention to the holes. You're gonna have one oval and one circle. I don't exactly remember which side the circle goes on and which side the oval goes on, so that's why we're gonna go take apart my car first, so that way we can see which side the oval goes on, and then I will fill you guys in, so that way you guys can put together your rear trailing arms the right way. Wreck still hasn't shown up for these. All right, you guys, so we got the car on bricks. Leo wanted to use bricks instead of jack stands. I'm not sure why, but you're gonna have these two bolts for your actual trailing arm bushing. One's right here, another's on the other side. They're 19s, and then you're gonna have this bolt right here. This bolt should be a 17. You guys, Rex showed up in an overheating Civic and he's trying to take the radiator cap off. I was just a little overreacting. Y'all already know I'm squeamish over hot radiators. But there ain't nothing in there to explode anyways. This guy needs a head gasket. Leo's car needs a head gasket. I'm gonna put my A6 in and realize that that thing has a blown head gasket. Look at this guy. <laughs> Knock on wood or your head. Knock on your head. So that way you don't get a blown head gasket. He keeps moving. <laughs> Did you already pour the whole thing in it? Yeah, this thing was empty. Yeah, dude. I'm gonna just say I filled it up this morning. <laughs> it burned all of that? I guess so. That's fucked up. 
Oh man, yeah, dude. Up, that's really fucked up. <laughs> you gotta take this thing apart like today. All right, we're back out here. Um, I got the wishbone pushed into the bushing. The oval side goes towards the wheel. So oval side points out, circle side points into the chassis. I wrapped it up in Teflon tape as a suggestion of Leo's. Um, I think that's gonna keep it from squeaking. If it does, I will let you guys know. That car has the same exact setup and it does not squeak in the back. I'll do the last one for the camera. It's cleaned for the most part. Doesn't have to be, you know, perfect, but just make sure there's no gunk on it, no burnt rubber and stuff like that. And all I do with the Teflon tape is I try to wrap it smoothly with about a 40% overlay and pretty much just try to get a flat surface wrapped all around the wishbone. <laughs> Here's what that looks like from here. Oh, one drum's out. Okay, from here, we're gonna press this guy in. Remember, oval side points towards the wheel and I have a little oiler, gonna use that as lubrication. I have no idea what that looked like. I haven't looked at the footage, but that is how I press in polyurethane bushings into CRX trailing arms. Me and Leo pretty much did this completely with no tools. Well, no special tools. I mean, we're pretty special. <laughs> We already went over where all the bolts were. The only other thing you need to worry about is your brake line up here. Use a line wrench, use penetrating oil as you can see Leo did. Do not round that nut off. Not that big of a deal if you do, you can cut it off and reflare it, but you know. You're gonna have a very bad time. One of the reasons I run polyurethane bushings, especially in trailing arms, is well check that out. That's the OEM bushing. It wasn't even it wasn't even a bushing at that point. You they were just the, the whole trailing arm was just bouncing around on this rubber. And they're just easy. They're easy to maintain. They're easy to install. As you see, we didn't need a press, we didn't need to cut anything out, nothing like that. And they rel they relatively they handle great they feel great on the road um if you have full polyurethane bushings on your car and it's a daily i've had full polyurethane bushings on a car as a daily before it is a little rough on the road if you like it rough who's to blame you what the heck all right here's another trailing arm about to come out Oh, handbrake cables. Don't forget those. I don't have handbrake cables yet, but when I get those, I will show you guys how to install them. All right, you guys, we're about to get going. We're almost done here. Leo's getting the last trailing arm bolted up. For the brake line, guys, it is a shape. I'm not sure what you would call that shape, but it's a little, just a little angle towards the wheel. And once you get it in there, 
you'll notice that you're gonna have a little bit of a lip. And then we take our clip and stick that in there. I'm gonna take a hammer and um, lock it in. Uh, that's all that is. We tapped the clip in there. Now let's tighten our brake line and that's gonna be it. If you have e-brake cables like you should, then you're gonna run them under the car and those two little ovals right there, right there, are where they fit into. And they fit into the stock 10 millimeter brackets. I don't know why I pointed at my screen like you guys could see the screen, but that's all we're gonna do from here. That's tight, that's secure. That is good to go. This entire side is done. Leo already finished the other side. I know the rotors are kind of ugly. They're just OEM replacement all rusted up, but they'll do the job for now. I'll probably replace everything with the first brake job I do on the car. What do the pads look like? Oh, they actually look rather thick. Yeah, I'll run this stuff for a little bit. It won't be too bad. All right, you guys, CRX has been converted to rear discs. Now I just need to install my brake booster and my master cylinder. Then I could break, bleed the brakes, but I'm not gonna do that until I have the EX spindles on there. That's gonna be another video because we still need to get tires fitted onto wheels that will fit over these brake rotors. What's going on, you guys? We are at EF Heaven, Carlos Galindo's house. We just picked up another old school innovative bar. This one's probably gonna be for Leo's car. And we're gonna see if he's got any goodies. Uh, offer up built. He said he got this B20 VTEC on an offer up deal. PR3 1 head, cable tranny. It was his baby. Did you make that or? No, it comes like that. Bro, it's kind of like the arrow, you know, active arrow. And that's OEM yeah, visor. Yeah, like AC OEM or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So OEM JDM visor. Yeah. Oh, she's right hand drive. The door's open. You can actually. I can get in. <laughs> this is my second right hand drive car I've ever sat in. Dang, you got. Oh, I know this car now. I know this car. I saw the tack. I know all the posts now. Bro, he's got the equalizer, the di the digital equalizer. Damn, dude, and the checkered, the checkered uh, floor mats. I know the Honda Access oh, floor mats. Heated mirrors. Oh shit, that's right. Heated. Bro, talk about Honda Access. Oh, <laughs> Check out his cage. Oh, look at the gather speaker pod. The rear tweeters. The Takata straps. Oh man, guys. The bride seats. He's got the freaking cup holder. Or not the cup holder, the um, armrest. The not short shifter. She's beautiful. The real deal. Damn, the door cards too. Just being in a right hand drive EF, honestly. Yeah, it's all bronze glass. His heated mirrors. I thought it was just a light. The windshield and everything. Oh, and the visor, good. The Civic. Hey, this is that same climate control that was going for like 375. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, the one HMO posted. Yeah. 375. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Doesn't it seat right or? I'm no, it needs to be. A, no, it's to be. I need mean, to like slam the shit out of it. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't want to like. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's a feels on. Oh, what the heck? Radiator. Yeah, that's the way it came from. Man of Japan. Nice. Oh, with the Cusco bar. Mm -hmm. Cusco bar. Nice. The field intake. Mm -hmm. uh, a little tube. Nice cylinder. 
Mm -hmm. No bolts. EF9. Camera don't want to focus at all. <laughs> it's too overwhelmed. Yeah. Washer. washer nozzles, round plug lights. Oh, these are the washers for the freaking headlights. Mm -hmm. Cool, you guys are getting baked. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, my bad. We were just uh, we we're wrapping up his car too because we were doing the yeah. trailing arm. We had to cut it from here. Oh, what the fuck? Because it was welded. Like, yeah. This bar was welded on when the cage was put on. Yeah. So it was just a Wow, holy on. crap, a doodle. How do you even get in here? Look at all those Stanleys back there. Oh, it's welded too. Yeah, it's gonna be like the track car. So this is gonna be the monster. All the race cages. Oh, dude. Is that an actual Honda uh, double dent cover? Uh, yes. Oh, they this They put guy. a hole in it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be like a, 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 a Yeah. yeah. There's that supposed to go in there? Yeah. And then they made it into a fan switch. Yeah, that's what I noticed. And then the little red switch. Yeah, yeah it's a fan switch. Recognize the name that is EF Heaven. This is where it started, and he provided me this passenger tail light because, as you guys know, I see this driver's tail light. Because, as you guys know, I do not have a driver's tail light. Um, I'm still looking for a really minty one, as you can see. This one has a crack. Well, it's really cool that we got to check out all of his builds, all of his cars. Ooh, oh my god, that hatchback that is literally Japan, the J front. The J front was every single Honda Access accessory you could have had. Gathers everything. Gathers equalizer. Gathers stereo. Gathers speaker pods. Gather rear cargo cover. Did you see that? The cargo cover was a gathers. Yeah, with the speaker pods attached yeah. to it. So it was awesome. We met we met one of the legends in the EF community and he really helped us out with our builds. He actually has been following along with the channel, with the Instagram page, with everything we've been doing. So that was actually really cool to hear. It was really cool to get the support from an older head in the community. Um, sorry I didn't do an outro. My camera died when I was, um, when we were wrapping up the rear discs. But we'll get back to that when we get home. Right, right now we're in LA, just picking up a lot of parts. We just stopped by Carlos Galindo's EF Heaven. We're gonna go hit up the homie Edwin, CRX SI323 and probably a couple others. But yeah, that's for the most part gonna wrap it up. Look at that, guys. came and totaled his Dodge Ram in the McDonald's drive through like he rolled into it. He totaled like two cars that were sitting there and destroyed the drive through sign. What is this? Covidizer advanced hand sanitizer? That kills 99.9% .9 of COVID. Covidizer? Covidizer. <laughs> All right, you guys, here's a proper outro to the last video. Well, to the video you're currently watching right now. Um, we got my rear trailing arms put on. My car is converted to rear discs. I still need to get CRX SI cables. Um, we went out to LA, we hit up Carlos Galindo, we hit up Edwin, we hit up freaking Lugo. We got a ton of parts for my car, a ton of just tiny little things that I need, just little clips and hardwares and stuff like that. So huge shout out to everyone that contributed, but this is gonna wrap it up for this video. Um, Leo's about to start crying and <laughs> Until next time, guys, save an EF, like, subscribe, leave some comments, and I will see you guys in the next video. Hey, guys. Yeah, it smells good. But don't forget to stay up to date with Always Daily Mate. <laughs>